uh, peace be upon you. It's with my great pleasure and uh, to speak to you on behalf of the North Islamic Cultural Center community of uh, 10,000 members. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Racial Diversity Task Force of Central Ohio and the First Unitarian Universalist Church of, uh, for hosting this gathering. I also would like to thank the pianist for such beautiful music, which I like. Anything with the name of God on it should be treated with the highest respect. The beauty of the American Constitution is that it provides for uh, us with the freedoms of religious practice and the freedom of speech. Besides other guarantees of the pursuit of happiness and the liberty. Most immigrants who left their homeland and came to America were looking for those guarantees. I make a plea to every American to speak up against this heinous act of burning the Quran. It's hateful, it's hurtful. It's a it's hateful and hurtful act. Let us get together and discuss and debate our teachings in peace and stop every effort which will divide us and divide this land of ours. America was founded on the basis of freedoms of speech and religion. Let us use those freedoms to bring us all closer together and closer to each other and to strengthen our nation instead of creating divisions. The New Islamic Cultural Center of Dublin, Ohio selects the September 26, 2010 as a share of the Quran day to distribute 200 copies of the Quran in response to the hateful call of Reverend Terry Jones of the Dove, Dove Wall Outreach Center in Florida to burn copies of the Quran this Saturday. We invite all who are interested in receiving a free copy of the Quran to stop by our center that day, the 26th of September, between the, the hours of 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. to get their copy. And we'll have guest speakers also on that event. We condemn the act of burning the Quran and call on our fellow Muslims, locally, nationally, and worldwide, to be calm, obey the law, and not react with hate and violence, but with peace. We call all Islamic centers and mosques across America to follow our example and share 200 copies of the Quran on September 26, 2010. May God bless America and protect this great nation of ours from all the mischief of evil doors. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Alicia Rivers. I am a commissioned deacon in the United Methodist Church. I consider myself a devout Christian. There are times when I think my Christianity and everyone else's who calls themselves Christian is the very thinnest of veneers on our Jewish brothers and sisters' faith because we come so directly from them. Today, out of respect for the Quran, I'm bringing a copy with me to this pulpit. Jamal actually handed me a bag with the Quran in it when I was attending the iftar at his Noor Islamic Center recently. And I find words in the Quran that speak to me as if they were coming from my own scriptures. I will just share a few sentences with you. It is he who sends down water for you from the sky from which comes a drink for you and the shrubs that you feed to your animals. With it, he grows for you grain, olives, palms, vines, and all kinds of crops. He has made the night and day, the sun, moon, and stars of all benefit to you. There truly are signs in this for those who use their reason. He has made of benefit to you the many colored things he has multiplied on the earth. There truly are signs in this for those who take it to heart. It is he who made the sea of benefit to you. Can he who creates be compared to one who cannot create? Why do you not take heed? If you count God's blessings, you could never take them all in. He is truly most forgiving and most merciful. 
Your God is the one God. And may God's blessings be added to the readings of this holy word. <coughs> My daughter, whom I confess, I've not always had the most peaceful of relationships with, <laughs> was telling me that in the two to three minutes I told her were allotted for this occasion, that I needn't worry because how we express ourselves is actually how we live beyond any two or three minutes. It's the way that we live in every moment of our lives. And therefore, we should not think that we are ever limited to two or three minutes. Um, she probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I'd like to tell you my response to what's been going on in this country of late. I try always to provide the context of what great religions do. And in the psychology of religion, we learn that great religions provide background and context for one to get through one's life and one's day. And what I discovered when I attended the Iftar in conversation with so many faithful Muslims there is that their lives are so very well structured around what gives it foundation and grounding. And I appreciate what I know about Islam for that reason. I heard a story on NPR about the flooding in Pakistan where the announcer was talking about the experience of being in a village that had just been overcome with the flood. The floods had receded, and the person whom this person was interviewing was talking about making the plans to have their iftar that evening, serving her family in the space where their animals had stayed. And I thought, yes, God, you have given these people the best way there is to have to carry on with their lives. You have given them a way to focus on your goodness and on structure for themselves. I also discovered the hospitality that night of the iftar. There were young girls serving us dinner, and I said, when do you get to break your fast? And the young woman I was speaking to said, oh, I don't mind. And I thought, what generosity and what understanding. I also heard that there were people who would be showing up at 9.30 that night to pray between then and midnight. And I thought, my goodness, what I am lacking in my Christian life. And so what I have carried away from my time of meditating and from what I have learned from my Muslim friends lately is that I would like to be more intentional about my own spiritual life. And I'd like to share the prayer with you that I've decided to take with me and to learn to memorize as a part of that spiritual life as another sign of honor and respect what I am learning from my Muslim friends. You don't have to pray it with me if you don't like. It's coming from my heart, which is what my daughter said. Carry it in your heart, and your time will not be limited to two to three minutes. God of grace, strengthen us to answer with brave hearts your call to help shape a world. Not of death and oppression, but of life and hope. God of mercy, strengthen us to help shape a nation where diversity is a source of enrichment, compassion is common, suffering lightened through sharing, justice attended to, joy pervasive, hope lived, and where together with you and with each other we build what is beautiful, true, and worthy of your generosity to us an echo of your kingdom. With the passion of the prophets and
And in your persistent and insistent spirit, we say amen and amen. is salam, that is peace, so I tell you, peace be upon you all. The Quran teaches us why we are created different. O mankind, we have, we created you from a single pair of a male, that is Adam, and a female, that is Eve, Hawa, in Arabic, and made you into nations and tribes, made you into nations and tribes, that you may know each other, that you may know each other, each other. And Islam encourages us to be positive, contributing members of both our communities and our environment. Here are some of the teachings of Islam. God is the provider of all his creatures and the most beloved to God is those among you who are most beneficial to his creatures. We are also taught if you happen to witness the start of the doomsday and you have a plant and if you live enough just to plant it, then do so. We are also taught if a Muslim plants a tree and men and beasts and birds eat from it, all of it is charity for him. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather here today as Americans and what is good for America is good for all of us. And what hurts America hurts all of us. We Muslims are part of the society and serving all as doctors, engineers, teachers, business people, and so on and so forth. Throughout history, minorities have come under attack, particularly during times of economic hardships. Our country is going through hardship today and some people are lashing out against minorities in their anxiety about the future. But we are, we all need to all stick together and help each other uh, to, through these difficult times. This is what will make our country strong and among the great successes of nations in the world. We condemned the act of few deranged men of 9-11 that caused the death of thousands of innocent men and women, including many Muslims. Islam forbids the killing of innocent men and women. Islam even forbids killing the birds except for the necessity of food. We cannot learn to live together and break down the barriers barriers that divide us unless we get to know each other better. I would like to thank uh, my friend Ray and Sister Zerka and all those who worked hard to put together this great event. And we are calling for continued interface efforts for the benefit of all of us Americans. And I'd like you to try the clava that the Islamic Society of America is donating and uh, you will not regret it, uh, believe me, it's excellent. Thank you very much.